Hello, my name is Barbara Calhoun and today I will present a study that was done at Northwestern University by Nicole Rousseau and her colleagues. This study was published in Behavioral and Brain Functions in 2010 and evaluates whether auditory training programs, such as Fast Forward, can alleviate the auditory processing deficits so frequently seen in children with autism spectrum disorders. Children with Autism Spectrum Disorders, or ASD, demonstrate impairments in the use of language for social and communicative purposes. These impairments are typically apparent prior to three years of age. There is emerging evidence that the neural encoding of speech sounds may be impaired in some children with Autism Spectrum Disorders, leading to atypical auditory brainstem responses in speech sounds and difficulties processing speech-specific stimuli, such as detecting speech in background noise. Since the Fast Forward products provide auditory training, including listening and sound sequencing exercises, auditory attention, auditory discrimination, phoneme discrimination, and memory training, Dr. Rousseau and her colleagues were interested in investigating the impact of the products on children with ASD. High-functioning children with ASD who had participated in an earlier study were invited to partake in this one. The children all had a formal diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. They had typical peripheral hearing, average mental abilities, and average or near-average language scores. Eleven boys with an average age of 9.2 completed the entire testing protocol and met the criteria. The children were then given the option of taking part in the intensive auditory training. Five children opted for the training and formed the experimental group. The other six children, who opted not to take part in the training, were willing to take part in the post-test and formed the control group. There was not a significant difference between the two groups in terms of age, IQ, or language ability. Students in the experimental group used the intense intervention, the Fast Forward Language Series, which entailed the Fast Forward Language product for an average of 20 days, followed by the Fast Forward Language to Reading product for an average of 32 days. Auditory brainstem responses, ABRs, and event-related potentials, ERPs, were recorded from both groups. These tests measure the size and the timing of electrical activity that occurs in the brainstem and brain in response to a sound. In this case, the sounds were synthesized vowels that were heard in the presence of background noise, as well as in quiet. Auditory brainstem responses are subcortical events occurring less than 10 milliseconds after the stimuli is presented, while event-related potentials are cortical events occurring a few hundred milliseconds after the stimuli is presented. Both ABRs and ERPs measure the aggregate response of neurons and neither requires active involvement by the participant. Due to the small number of participants and the variations between them, the analysis involved defining a typical change as the average change for students in the control group plus one standard deviation and defining a significant change for one of the participants as a change that was more than the control group's change plus one standard deviation. Results are shown here for one of the cortical measures, specifically the timing of P1 in response to a signal presented in noise. The y-axis is time in milliseconds. Each point shows the time the P1 occurred before intervention or after intervention for each subject. This line indicates the top range of average for students with typical development with the average range extending down. As you can see, many of the students in the study initially had P1s that occurred outside the average range. Overall, the control group started in the typical range, moving a little closer to the middle of the range with a standard deviation of 13.7. For all five students who used the Fast Forward products, the P1s moved closer to the middle of the typical range, and four of the five students had P1s that changed more than expected 
based on the controls group change and standard deviation. The first four measures listed here are subcortical, while the bottom four are cortical. X's indicate measures that showed significant improvements. As you can see, the results showed that three participants had significant improvements on two measures, and two participants had significant improvements on three measures. Three of the five subjects had significant changes on subcortical measures, specifically wave A, while all five subjects had significant changes on a cortical measure, specifically the P1 latency in quiet and or in noise. Based on the definition of standard deviation, there is a 16% chance that a measure will improve by more than one standard deviation. Therefore, the researchers were particularly interested in subjects that had two or more measures improve. As you can see from the summary, all five students improved more than one standard deviation on at least two tests. The researchers concluded that there is initial evidence that directed auditory training may improve auditory processing in a specific population of children with ASD, specifically high-functioning children with ASD who have hearing in the typical range. They also concluded that computer-based training may benefit some children with ASD by acting on biological processes. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, please refer to the study or contact our customer service team.